Now, today we wanted to talk about an art-related topic that I get asked all the time. Basically, what are the different types of Kempo and how do they compare to American Kempo, my home art? To be honest, this one is not entirely easy to answer because the term Kempo is a little muddy in application and its context has been spun through the political blender, so it is applied in a lot of ways that don't always seem related. As always, I encourage anyone to contribute to this conversation as this is just a starting point of discussion and it's impossible for me to list every single art that uses the word Kempo or its variation Kempo in its name. Now, if I don't mention a version of Kempo that you've studied or know about, it doesn't mean I'm purposely disrespecting it. It just means I'm trying to keep this list as broad as we can just to explore the meaning of the word, or quite honestly, it might be a branch that I'm unaware of, which is where I hope you'll come in and contribute. You know, I learned a lot from you guys as well. With all that being said, Let's take a look at some different types of Kempo. Okay, so what are the different types of Kempo? Well, first, let's take a look at the word itself, since that is the first area of confusion. You may have seen two variations of spelling, Kenpo with an N and Kempo with an M. So is there a difference? And if so, which one is correct? Well, the word traces back to the Chinese word Tuan Fa, which is through translation also found in various spellings. This word basically translates to fist law or fist method. When the word was translated into Japanese, it becomes Kenpo. Now, in the rules of kanji, when a character ends with the letter N, it will be pronounced with the N sound, unless it's followed by a character that starts with P. In that instance, the N makes an M sound. So technically speaking, it should be spelled Kenpo, but pronounced Kempo. Now through romanization, you will sometimes find it also spelled with the M, and at this point the word has gone through enough translations that both versions can be considered correct. Through this grammar, you also sometimes come across the same thing with the word senpai. I've also seen it spelled and pronounced as senpai. Now there can be further distinction found, and I've come across this a few times. If we go back very briefly and look at the word karate, we will find some of that political pull on the translation. Karate means empty hand, but originally the characters in Japanese meant tang or Chinese hand. Now, political relations between China and Japan weren't on the best grounds, and when the Okinawan arts, which had a lot of Chinese influences in them, were brought to Japan by Gishin Funakoshi, the Japanese character for China was changed to mean empty. As a result, sometimes the word Kenpo is applied to martial arts systems that come through Japan from Chinese roots. And using the term Kenpo is acknowledging the history when the word Karate was altered to bury it. In addition, you will sometimes see people using the word Kenpo with an M designated spelling to refer to these arts that came through Japan as opposed to American Kenpo, which really traces its roots from China to Hawaii to mainland USA. So there is that distinction you will come across at sometimes. Interestingly, the word Kenpo doesn't hold the same meaning in Okinawa, where very often it's just an alternate way of saying Karate. In Okinawa, the words Karate and Kenpo are often used interchangeably. Now, when it comes to the word Kenpo in the United States, nine times out of 10, it is referring to Ed Parker's American Kenpo or some variation of it, but we're gonna come back to this one. We're gonna take a quick look now at some of the more common styles of Kenpo. Now, again, we are taking an objective look at this point. I know there are a lot of opinions, conjecture, and politics surrounding some of these founders slash arts slash practitioners, so I do ask that we focus the discussion on the history and development of these arts and leave the hate and politics out of it. Kosho Ryu Kempo is the name of the art brought to the United States by Grandmaster James Mitosi. He was born in Hawaii, and at the young age of four, he was sent to Japan for a formal education and also to study the family martial arts. Now, the Matosi family trained in Chuan Fa, and through their generations, they continually modified and adapted the art until it became their own family style. Now, the complete name of the art is Kosho Share Ryu Kempo, which translates to Old Pine Tree School Fist Law. Now, at one point in time, Matosi did refer to it as Kempo Jiu Jitsu, and it's even known to have been referred to as Shirinji Kempo, which translates to Small Forest Temple Kempo. This art was a blend of Chuan Fa with an influence of Japanese Jiu Jitsu and the philosophy of roots deep in Buddhism. Matosi wanted Kosho Ryu Kempo to be more than just a fighting system. According to his family, he placed a lot of importance on internal balance as well as physical skills. Kosho Ryu Kempo also heavily included philosophy, meditation, Japanese yoga, calligraphy, escapes, and the healing arts. Now, after training for 15 years in Japan, James Matosi returned to Hawaii and he began teaching his family art to the public. According to the family website, Matosi only promoted a handful of people to show it on Black Belt. One of those people was William K.S. Chow, the founder of Karaho Kempo. 
Now, interestingly enough, even though William Chow was a student of James Potosi, his philosophy behind the martial arts was very, very different. To William Chow, studying Kempo had the purpose of destroying your attacker. It was strictly about self-defense. In a quote posted to the Karaho Kempo website, Professor Chow once said, survival in the street first, everything else is second. Chow was born in Honolulu in 1914, and he grew up studying a variety of fighting arts, including karate, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, and boxing. He was a tough martial artist, which had to make up for his small frame. At a height of only 5'2", William Chow often demonstrated his technique and power, and he was known for putting together sequences of technique combinations fired in rapid succession. Now, after he studied under James Potosi, he formulated his art of Karaho Kempo. He had several notable students, such as Edmund K. Parker, Nick Serio, and Adriano Imperato, each of whom went out to spearhead their own fighting systems. After his passing, his organization fell into the shoulders of San Kuoha, one of Chow's most dedicated and successful students. Grandmaster Kuoha continues to run the organization today, which claims to have over 5,000 students. Now, I have covered this topic extensively in a three-part series, The Origin of American Kempo, The Evolution of American Kempo, and The Kempo Crest. If you want to learn the background and development of the art, then I definitely recommend watching those. I cover the art in pretty expanded detail in the hour combined between the three episodes. Now, I have to include it on this list because it has encapsulated the word Kempo so much that when someone in the United States says the word Kempo, it is usually referring to Ed Parker American Kempo or one of its derivative styles. Ed Parker was a martial artist who grew up in Hawaii and he trained in Judo, Karate, Boxing, and eventually with William Chow. Ed Parker combined a lot of elements of Kempo and mixed it with a lot of other arts including Tuan Fa and he created his own blend of techniques. This system went through so many changes over the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even still today. It once went by the names Chinese Kempo, Kempo Karate, Ed Parker's Kempo, and eventually American Kempo. The system changed greatly with Ed Parker and his disciples constantly altering and adjusting the art, adding and removing elements, and he put the system into a never-ending trend of fine-tuning, which still continues today. As a result, it has spawned many other systems that have become their own strong entities. I can't list all of them because I don't think YouTube will allow a video upload that long, but here are some of the more notable or popular or common Kempo offshoots. First, we have Tracy Kempo. Now again, I also covered this in more depth in the Evolution of American Kempo video, but just to sum it up, Al and Jim Tracy were students under Ed Parker early in his system. When Mr. Parker started doing drastic changes to the art, they broke off on their own and they continued to teach their own version of Kempo, which they say is more based on the original blend Ed Parker was working with. Their organization often calls it traditional Kempo and claims a greater connection with Hungar to retain that traditional lineage. Now the differences between Tracy and Parker Kempo can be very subtle yet significant to those who have trained in one or both of the styles. They share a lot of the same techniques and forms, often with different names. The Tracy system also includes some forms in later ranks that bear more similarity to the Chinese forms and less to the Ed Parker long forms. Ed Parker Kempo is taught in long sequences of self-defense techniques, approximately 150 of them depending on which version of the art you train in. Tracy Kempo claims over 600 techniques because they have shorter sequences, but they modify them in A, B, C, D versions. In the end, it's about the same amount of material, but it's just spread differently. The first school I studied at taught Tracy Kempo, and after about four years, we switched over to Ed Parker Kempo. The differences between them are sometimes hard to describe, but basically, they approach the same training goals, but from slightly different philosophies. Kempo 5 is a version of American Kempo spearheaded by Jeff Speakman, one of Mr. Parker's last students. Now, Mr. Speakman has taken Kempo forward into a very different direction by adding a lot of grappling into the system and amplifying the resistance combat training included. I also covered this in the American Kempo series, and much like American Kempo, it continues to adapt constantly. I had the fortune of training in Kempo 5 for a few years, and it provided a lot of new insight and flavor to what I personally feel was already a great system. It's also very different now from when I trained in it, but it continues to change and grow to this day. Kempo Sublevel 4 is a system developed by Dr. Ron Chappelle, another student of Ed Parker's Kempo, who took the material and he decided to delve into another aspect of the system. The name refers to the different fighting ranges that we study in Kempo. One, out of range. Two, within range, usually for kicks or advancing techniques. Three, punching range or medium range. And four, close range. Now the concept is that this fourth range can be broken down into different sub-levels to understand and study pressure points, joint structure, at a, very, at a very close examination. The BKF, or Black Karate Federation, was founded by Sijo Steve Muhammad and Grandmaster Donnie Williams. 
Both men grew up in times of extreme racism, and despite those challenges, they both went on to accomplish successful careers in the martial arts. Both men served in the military, both accumulated a long list of tournament victories, and they both even had appearances in motion pictures, including Enter the Dragon. Now, after Williams won the title at the 1977 International Karate Championships in Long Beach, he devoted himself to religion and founded the Family Church International, and he continues to work as a bishop today. Steve Muhammad continues to teach, and he was one of Ed Parker's most notable students. He was known for his extreme speed, to the point of even Bruce Lee saying that Muhammad was one of the fastest martial artists he'd ever seen. That's saying something. Now he went on to modify the material himself, develop something called the Five Speed Theory and the 12 Basic Moves of Kempo, and he continues to be a positive influence in the martial arts today. I had the honor of meeting him at a seminar a few years ago, and he is a humbling individual. Such a rich history behind him, and he's one of the most genuinely nicest people you'll ever meet. We really hope to do a video covering the BKF in the near future. Now Chuck Sullivan was yet another notable student under Ed Parker, and his influence is felt deeply in the Kempo community. He began to train with Mr. Parker back in 1959, and he is one of the highest ranking students to be promoted by Mr. Parker himself. Now, in 1990, Mr. Sullivan founded the International Karate Connection Association with one of his top students, Vic LaRue. Together, they formulated their own version of Kempo with a combination of their backgrounds. Mr. Sullivan is a lifelong student of Kempo, and Mr. LaRue had a mixture of Kempo, Eskrima, Wing Chun, and Jeet Kune Do. Their system shares a lot of the same roots of Ed Parker's American Kempo, however, it does differ in many areas, and they do refer to it as the IKCA Chinese Kempo. It is self-defense focused and it shares many of the same techniques as American Kempo, but it also features many of their own variations, concepts, modified basics, and a completely different set of self-defense based katas. They also have a popular and well-established online training program, which I have spoken to a few of you about out there, and I have received positive feedback about it. Now, one thing I really do want to caution on, and I'm only bringing this up because I've had this conversation with multiple viewers, is that many people mistake the system for Ed Parker's Kempo. The system is not American Kempo. American Kempo is specifically referring to Ed Parker's American Kempo. The IKCA is their own offshoot with their own curriculum. Many people don't realize this when they sign up because they think they're training in Ed Parker Kempo. If you ask them directly, they're very open and upfront about them not being the same system, and they actually call their art Chinese Kempo on their site. But it's still an easy mistake to make if you don't already know. I have heard positive things about it, and if you train in it and you want to sign up for it, then by all means give it a try, but just understand this is a different art. Then we come to Thomas Connor. Now I received a lot of grief from some of you out there for not including him in my previous Kempo videos. You know who you are, this is for you. In all seriousness, I wasn't that familiar with him at the time. I have had contact with a few different versions of Kempo, but this was not one that I had crossed paths with. So I looked into it and I wanted to include him on this list this time around because he did have influence that is still around today. Mr. Connor started training in the martial arts at the young age of seven in Newark, New Jersey and New York. He trained in Hungar and Wing Chun before enlisting into the army during World War II. Now, upon returning from the war, he had become quite a successful combatant and he took up work with the US government as an operative in Central America and Mexico. He included Jiu Jitsu into his training and he retired from the government in 1960 and in 1965, he was running his own very successful martial arts program. Now, Connor continued his training and he formed a partnership with Ed Parker, which he called Kopar Kempo, and he became a prolific student of the art, as well as adding Chinese martial arts into his own regimen. In 1970, the partnership expanded to include the Tracy Brothers, which, so they all formed the Trey Kopar system. Now, eventually, the partnership dissolved and Connor and Tr the Tracys continued forward with Trey Ko Kempo. This system became very successful and they spread out into several schools. Mr. Connor passed away in 1989, but you will still find Traco students training to this day. I also found one of their lower belt training manuals, and it was quite the interesting read. It included the concept of the three circles of Kempo. The first circle composes the basics of breathing, balance, and form. Now these are very important foundations to any martial art. The second circle included the development of sensitivity, the increase of energy when training, and the establishment of moral conduct. The third circle encompasses using meditation as a tool and embraces compassion, commonality, and controlling your ego. Now, interestingly enough, when I looked further at the required techniques for this entry belt level, I immediately recognized them and I knew them as techniques from the Tracy system. So when it comes to Kempo in the United States, you're gonna find a lot of overlap in the systems and, and see that they influence other systems. So there's a lot of commonality between them. So that's just a very quick summary of American Kempo of some of its related systems. Now, as we go down the list, we can still find some other variations of Kempo. Nick Serio was one of the aforementioned students of William Chow. 
Mr. Stereo himself is a highly respected martial artist and he had quite the mixed flavor of training. He grew up knowing struggle and worked at odd jobs at the age of 10 just to help his family get by and he was also known to get into various street fights in the streets of Providence, Rhode Island. As a teenager, he began formal training in boxing, which was the beginning of his academic look in the fighting. Studying theories of angulation and concepts of motion, he even had a successful fighting experience boxing while in the Air Force. Now, after leaving the military in 1958, Sirio added judo to his training, and three years later switched to taekwondo. He didn't stop there, and his resume of arts just grew to an impressive list. He trained under George Passara in the art of Karazempo Goshin Jitsu, and through his tournament career, he met Ed Parker. Now, Nick Serio did not train directly under Parker, but the two remained close friends for almost two decades, and Serio once said that, Ed Parker was never my instructor, but he was like my coach. He was my senior because we came from the same Kempel family. I used a lot of Ed Parker's ideas in my system. Now, his training under William Chow was not easy. Chow was known for his tough regimen and grueling training, and he claimed that this instruction influenced his later teaching of his own system. After adding Hakoryu Jiu-Jitsu, Sil Lum Kung Fu, and Okinawan weapons training, Serio went on to establish his own system of Nick Serio's Kempo. Now his Kempo was a unique blend of all his previous experiences he'd accumulated, boxing, Sim Lung Kung Fu, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, and even Shotokan. Nick Serio was definitely a factor in the spread of Kempo in the United States, predominantly in the New England area. I also mentioned Adriano Imperato, also a student of Chow. Now, technically his system isn't really a Kempo system, but I would like to add it because it would be doing it injustice if I left it off this list. Mr. Imperato was a skilled fighter in Karaho Kempo, and together with four other martial artists, they formed the hybrid system of Kajukenbo, which is very popular today. Each founder brought with them their own martial art background to create this pretty well-balanced system. The name Kajukenbo is a portmanteau of various arts used to combine it. Ka is for Karate, Ju is for Judo and Jiu-Jitsu, Ken is for Kenpo, and Bo is for Boxing. Emperado brought the Karaho Kenpo and a scream of contribution. Joseph Hulk brought Judo, Frank Ardoñez with Danzen Ryu Jiu Jitsu, Peter Young Il Chu with Tong Su Do, Boxing and Shotokan Karate, and Clarence Change with Chin Na, a form of Chinese joint locking. Now this is quite the intricate mix of martial arts, and it was consistently adapted to keep the techniques that were effective in the street and discard the ones that weren't. Now this is another art that we're going to be circling back to in the future, but we wanted to mention it here today because it is related to Karaho Kenpo and it does share some similar roots. Shirinji Kenpo was mentioned earlier as one of the names James Matosi used for his Koshoryu Kenpo. Now this is not to be confused with the art of Shirinji Kenpo founded by Japanese martial artist Doshin So. Doshin So formed his art as a way to raise morality among Japanese citizens following the aftermath of World War II. He blended his experience in the Chinese arts with Jiu Jitsu and possibly elements of Karate. The system is divided into three parts, self-defense, mental training, and health training. Doshin So felt that training should encompass both the physical body and the human spirit. Now, even though So passed away in 1980, his art still flourishes today with several organizations continuing to teach the system. This is another one that we will come back to later and take a look at in the full detail. And now for some honorable mentions. White Tiger Kempo was founded by master John McSweeney and Thomas Saviano. Both men had various experience in different arts, including the Parker's Kempo and Judo, and several styles of Kung Fu, such as San Su, White Crane, and forms of Northern Kung Fu. Their art is a unique blend of their experience. Shaolin Kempo is another very common term and an example of how the word Kempo gets blurry sometimes. In the United States, Shaolin Kempo is a popular variation of the art founded by Fred Valari. Valari was a student of Nick Serio and William K.S. Chow and he used his experience to alter and create his own fighting system called Shaolin Kempo Karate. It claims to combine the five animal fighting style of Shaolin Kung Fu, the core framework of Kempo, the stances and explosive power of Karate, and blends in the grappling arts of Jiu Jitsu, Mongolian wrestling, and the Chinese joint locking art of Chin Na. Valari focuses the training on four aspects of fighting, striking, kicking, felling or takedowns, and grappling. Now, Valari has attracted some criticism from the various martial arts communities by appointing himself 10th degree black belt and later 15th degree. Now, I don't have any experience to have any opinion on this, but if you research this art, you can expect to come across this controversy, so make of it what you will, just be aware that it's there. 
In any case, Filari, Shaolin, and Kempo Karate is a unique blend and a very popular system in the United States. This is not to be confused with Shaolin American Kempo, a system devised and established by Grandmaster Jim Broussard. Broussard describes his system as a mix of Shaolin American Kempo Karate, Kung Fu, Jiu Jitsu, and Chinese boxing. Now, it doesn't seem to have much relation, if any, to Fred Valari Shaolin Kempo. Now, I can't speak very much about the system as I am unfamiliar with it, but I do urge doing further research. There are some concerning elements, though, on the main website, such as claiming to be the most effective strength system, bodybuilding, and self-defense program available out there, and pictures such as this to advertise the program. Now, I'm not sure if the focus is more on self-defense or fitness, and I invite anyone watching that if you have any experience with the system, I would be very interested to know what your feedback is, and I'm curious to know about any light that you can shed on the art. Now, this is still not to be confused with Shaolin Kempo with an N, established by Grandmaster Ralph Castro. Castro's Shaolin Kempo organization is often mistaken for Fred Valari's Shaolin Kempo Karate system. Castro was also a student of William Chow, and generally speaking, Systems that use the word Shaolin in the name are usually trying to establish a lineage back to traditional Shaolin Kung Fu roots. And the last mention on this list is Ryukyu Kenpo. Now the two common versions of this art is the first one established by Taika Seiyu Oyata, and I apologize if I mispronounced that, and it focuses on the close combat fighting, utilizing close and striking, grappling just like Jiu Jitsu, and joint locking and escapes. It also utilizes Okinawan weapons training, or Kabuto, and it has several branches over the world. The other one is Ryukyu Kempo Tomari Te, established by George Dillman. Now, there is an incredible amount of controversy around his system, mainly that Dillman pushed heavy marketing and campaigns on the idea of light pressure point work and no touch knockouts. No touch knockouts are definitely a point of contention in the martial arts community, and I'm not quite sure we're ready to touch on this topic just yet. See what I did there? What are you doing? So, as an overview, the word Kempo has grown to take on some several meanings, origins, and adaptations. It can be confusing, and sometimes when you hear arts described as Chinese Kempo, Shaolin Kempo, and the like, it's really worth the additional research to make sure you understand the exact context of it. Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if I missed one that you know of, please by all means comment below and tell us more about it. If it has some good history, it might be one that we'll go back and pick up and develop into an individual episode. Thank you so much for watching and celebrating the Law of the Fist with us today. Please be sure to join us on Patreon to bring you more art-based history videos and other channel goals. Warrior and Scholar, signing out.